Okay, so I'm sick and tired of doing videos where I'm just sitting in my room and just blabbing away. So today I'm going to do something a little different and go back to what I was doing before where I didn't just sit in the same place the whole time because no one wants to see that. So I hope you idiots are happy because I am going to review another jacket even though I said I wasn't going to review. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get my pants off that easy. I'm deciding to review my Filson Double Mac Cruiser because I'm selling it. Not because I don't like it, just because I have so many wool jackets that I don't really need another one. But I figured before I sell it, today's the day before I'm going to sell it, I will do a little review for you. So I hope you're happy. Um, first thing we're going to check is just, you know, how water resistant it is. So I have the shower on and we're going to get in. Here we go. All on my back. There we go. We're going to take the jacket off. And you can see the inside is completely dry. Alright, so what's up? I figured that I would just... Okay, so the Filson Mackinac Cruiser, probably one of the most famous wool jackets of all time. You know, there's the Peacoat, there's the Cruiser, there's bridge coat. basically everything's from the war, which is good, I guess. War is fun. This is also from the war. And it's actually a super great jacket. I love this jacket. Like I said, I'm only selling it because I have a lot of other wool jackets. I'm also wearing a lot more down jackets than I used to, but uh, this jacket is super, super crazy warm. This is 26 ounce wool all over the body. And since this is the double Mac, you know, there's actually a cape of wool over the like booby area. This looks like I'm going to flash you. And the sleeves are also two layers of wool. So that's really nice. This is a really warm jacket. Probably one of the warmest wool jackets that you can get. And real quick, actually, I want to address, there's this video of this guy on YouTube. He's comparing a weather wool jacket with a Filson jacket. They're both really expensive. I think this Filson jacket's like $500. I buy most of my jackets used, which I'll get into in a second. But that guy is comparing, I think a weather wool jacket is like $800 versus like $500 or $400, $450. I don't know. But it's just, uh, it's not really that fair of a comparison. He's clearly either paid by weather wool or there's so there's something weird going on and I'm definitely not saying that weather wool jacket is bad because it's an amazing jacket I'd love to have one I just think he kind of didn't give Filson a fighting chance at all so I kind of want to fill some stuff in there on the gap so right off the bat like I said I buy basically all of my jackets used and you can usually get one in almost new condition for like $200 off I paid $230 for this when normally it goes like 500 or whatever it goes it's it's basically like new so real quick tip though if you're looking for a used wool jacket there is something that you should watch out for and that obviously is the condition of the wool wool is super hardy especially Mackinac boiled wool super tough stuff but look for certain things the easiest way to tell if like a wool garment is used a lot especially wool outerwear is if you look at these sleeves it's kind of hard to see but see here how you can kind of see the stitching pattern and over around here it seems like a little bit more fuzzier and you can't see the stitching pattern here it's kind of like a denim roping thing that's a really easy way to tell that a garment's been worn a lot and that's not necessarily saying it's even bad it's just saying you know that's a good indicator of how much wear a jacket has anyway Filson jackets are kind of synonymous with like a wool winter jacket and from what I hear they used to actually be priced like a workwear wool jacket and then when Filson got bought out they started to get more expensive they started to kind of lean towards more hipstery fashiony markets which is is fine for me because that's kind of my market you can see it I mean they have the Alaskan cut they have the Seattle cut which is you know kind of split down the middle Alaskan is this cut which is if I take a step back you'll be able to see it's a pretty bulky jacket this is a size 38 jacket and the chest actually fits me really well so no complaints about the chest but the arms itself are like very wide and very large so I mean it's made to be layered I have a Taylor Stitch sweater on under it and it, it fits like I could probably fit another Mackinac cruiser under this I think from what I've heard too is now Filson didn't split up into two different sizes now it's not Alaskan and Seattle although I do see some of that in the woman's line I think now it's basically a generally more slim down fit but still wide enough to layer on so you should be good now either way though this isn't that crazy of a wide jacket you can see it's like I look pretty big from this angle but when it gets cold enough fashion is kind of out the window right now it's 20 degrees feel fine my hands get cold if I stick them out like this but if I keep them in my pockets they're super warm I forgot to bring another warm jacket and all I had was my denim jacket and a sweater and I'm not warm and I'm not tough enough to pretend that I am so 
I'm gonna still do b-roll but I'm just gonna be cold. The wool on the outside is very, very rough. I mean, in terms of wool, it's not the roughest wool I've ever felt. If you've ever held like a very old wool sweater when they didn't care if you were comfortable, you just had to survive, it's not like that. That I've worn before and it, it literally feels like, it's like, it, it's like walking with briars all over your body. Like a old wool sweater with not a long cotton undershirt or a long undershirt of something is awful. They are super warm though. So real quick detail shot of this Jackie, you'll see we have five buttons down here we have a final button if you want to kind of close the collar up add a little bit more warmth this is my biggest pet peeve with all winter jackets I wish this collar went up high so I could put it around like this but whatever it doesn't so this I kind of do when I'm really cold and I don't want any air going around my neck um, we have these booby pockets like I told you you can put whatever you want in them we have some stitch down two pockets right here so you can shove bullets in there for killing and then we have two pockets way down here that you can put your hands in like this if you want. I don't suggest that at all. If you ever have a jacket with hand pockets that go down like this, they're not meant for your hands. There's always gonna be a little line of skin showing here that sucks. What a good hand warmer pocket is, is right on the side where you can shoot your arm in like that. Or even better sometimes, there's hand pockets up here and you can put them in there. Besides that, in the back of the jacket, there's a game pouch so you open that up and you can fit a rabbit in there or you can put a map. A lot of people say a map. I think it's for dead animals. I don't think it's for a map, but you can really put anything you want back there. I'm not gonna put anything back there. Maybe my gloves if I want to, but it kind of makes it look like you have a weird shaped butt. Not the vibe I'm going for, so I don't really use it that much. What is nice though is basically down the back though, what that means is that since it's a pocket, you have a layer of wool. So you have the outside, inside where you put whatever, and then you have the other side. So it keeps more warmth in, which is really nice. I have quite a few wool jackets, and the biggest thing is, you know, if you're walking against the wind or towards the wind or whatever, you could feel the wind getting in and throwing all your warm air outside. So it's nice when you have double that, it's a little bit more protection. I forgot to mention, I am 5'9", 152 pounds. People are always like, Mike, you should tell people how big you are. And I'm like, well, I meant to, I just didn't remember. Also, real quick, if you don't subscribe, I swear to God. In terms of this fabric being windproof, it's definitely not. I don't really know any wool that is 100% windproof. Maybe like a 32 ounce, super tightly woven peacoat is probably gonna be the most windproof wool you can get, but even then, it's it's just a matter of how wind resistant is it, you know? So, you know, a lot of people will wear like a windproof shirt under it or something like that, just to keep the wind out because that's really one of the biggest things that steals your heat. Just the wind's blowing, you know? It's going crazy outside. So really, the most important thing of this jacket, though, is wool itself. I mean, Filson has its own proprietary Mackinac wool, which is really tightly woven. Also boiled, which means, you know, you get a size of wool this big, you boil it down to that big, you get all the warmth and all the thickness and all the wind resistance of a piece of wool this big, scrunched down. The weave gets tighter, it gets a little thicker, keeps in warmth better. It's really nice. It's boiled wool. I'm sure if you love wool, you know this, but as you saw when I was in the shower, it's really water resistant. I mean, you could turn the faucet on, stick your sleeve under the water, and just kind of watch it all beat off for a while. Really hard to get water in, and the nice thing is, if you get a wool jacket wet, it's still gonna insulate when wet. That's one of the most important things. If you have a down jacket that doesn't have a decent way of getting rain off of it, or shedding rain, and it gets wet, the second that compresses and you lose that loft, you're kind of screwed, you're out of luck. That jacket's gonna be cold until it dries and regains its loft. Nice thing though with wool is that it can be wet and still be insulating. It's gonna smell horrible like a dog, but also it's gonna keep you warm, so that's good. That's also why you shouldn't really wear cotton stuff outside when it's super cold. Anyways, kinda last thing, this jacket is unlined. Basically, all Filson cruisers are unlined. There is the wool cape coat, which isn't a cruiser, but it's by Filson. It's wool on the outside, and then it's like a polyester Sherpa with insulate in it. I really don't like synthetic insulators just because they compress over time, and that means, you know, as time goes on, they don't insulate that well, but the wool and the Sherpa polyester inner, or acrylic, I forget what it is, I really think would be a really nice jacket. But anyways, like I was saying, this jacket is not lined, and I really wish it was for a multitude of reasons. One of the biggest things is that comfort-wise, this is not a comfortable jacket unless you have a long sleeve something underneath it. And really, I mean, you probably always would have something underneath it. If you're putting on a big heavy wool jacket, it's probably going to be pretty cold outside, but a lot of times I just like to throw on a jacket and go with a short sleeve under it. I don't run hot, but if it's like 30 degrees, I can do a t-shirt and a wool jacket. So I really like like a nice soft liner just so I can toss it on and not care. The downside of that with having a liner that's not not wool is it's probably gonna be cotton but the downsides of having like a cotton liner is that I think one wool is antimicrobial I can't say that antimicrobial also wool is really odor resistant and of course like I said wool has all those properties of when it's wet the insulatory properties so so having a cotton liner kind of takes away from all that stuff but it really really adds to the comfort factor and adds a lot of wind resistance if you have a tightly woven cotton liner you're gonna get a lot more wind resistance than just wool so I really like that and that really adds a lot of warmth and a lot of value especially for me I have Woolrich's version of the Mackinac 
Mack Cruiser and I don't know what they called it, but it's basically the exact same kind of Mackinac wool on the outside, but it has a cotton liner. They're really kind of the same warmth. For me, it's hard to really distinguish which one is warmer and which one's not, even though this one is a double. So you think it'd be kind of an easy competition. This would be my super warm jacket. The Woolrich wouldn't be as warm, but they're close because of that liner. But the last thing I'll say about Filson is that they seem to have like a product inconsistency because ideally what a Mackinac Cruiser for me would be, would be a single slim cruiser with a lining on the inside. But oddly enough, Filson doesn't offer that configuration, but they only don't offer it for men and that's all they offer for women. So the really the ideal jacket that I want from Filson is their women's jacket, which I'll show a picture of, and that's really exactly what I'd want. I just haven't seen it anywhere on Filson's site or used or anything like that, which is weird to me. Anyways, a lot of people say that Filson's quality has gone down a lot. I don't really think that's true. I've seen and worn and had a lot of old Filson's. This one's relatively new and the quality to me honestly seems really good. A lot of people are really purists and they see, you know, it was made here or it was stitched like this or it was like 24.3 ounce wool instead of 24 ounce wool. It's not made like it's used to, whatever. Like I said, that video where that guy is comparing weather wool to Filson, obviously he has some points. I mean, it's $300 more for that jacket. I think at least $300 more for that jacket. So I'd really expect it to have nylons zips or like this flashy thing or that flashy thing but at the end of the day he trashed Filson when it definitely didn't deserve being trashed because it's one of the most legendary jackets of all time. Weatherwool I'm sure is an amazing jacket especially for that price it better be amazing but Filson deserves a lot more props than he gave it and I highly suggest you get a Filson like I said used if you want one.